So today we'll talk about making the decision to do something instead of uh, being unsure and saying I'll try and how that actually serves as a vehicle to give you access to a wider array of possibilities for success and goal setting. So the way I view it, success is two parts mental and one part mechanical. So it's mostly what's in your head, meaning how much do you believe in yourself, in your abilities, um, how much knowledge do you have, um, how well you, have you been successful in the past. Uh, and the, the smaller part is the actual execution part, the mechanical part, because if you have the belief down and you know you trust yourself um, you have faith you have a good plan uh, there's not really going to be a problem to execute um, as long as you have that faith so based on that sentence it would mean that oh I just need to believe in myself and then I'll actually get access to you know the motivation to do something to actually go after my goals now there's a problem here um, because you needed to find a way to get that faith in yourself. So the only way I found to actually make it happen, um, which I've talked about in previous videos, is by proving to your brain through willpower that you're actually able to uh, exert certain influence upon yourself and make shit happen. Um, because you know every goal, let's say you know a small goal like um, going to the gym for an hour has certain um, characteristics to it basically you know you need to dress you need to go to the gym you need to exert some energy and then you need to go back now that's a simple goal now uh, a much more complex goal would be let's say I want to gain 10 pounds of muscle and lose 20 pounds of fat so this kind of goal is obviously a lot harder and will take much longer dedication. Um, so your brain first wants the proof that you're actually going to make it happen. You're actually going to pull through and make it happen because it's not going to give you the motivation. It's not going to give you the resource to make it happen until you give it proof that you can actually do it. It's like a catch-22. Um, because your brain doesn't want you to start going after the goal and then give up midway because your brain looks at that as a loss it means you lost energy you wasted energy on something you didn't do it's better to stay the way you are and not suffer from a defeat than to um than to start you know doing it and then stopping midway so Again, your brain wants proof. It wants proof that you're actually going to pull through and make it happen. Um, it's called proof, not promises, basically. So how do you deliver that promise? Well, again, the best way I found to deliver it is to show your brain that you have the willpower to actually pull through with it. You need to show it you have willpower to um, do things even though you don't feel like doing them at that moment so the higher your willpower you know the more willpower you can demonstrate the more your brain will trust you and give you access to a more developed more complex array of uh, goals and uh, that you can go after that you actually have the motivation to go after so the the best way to do it is to start stretching yourself in various areas um, I found the gym to be one of the best ways uh, simply because it's very methodical um, the gym is you can basically stretch anything as much as you want whereas in other areas uh, you have to be a bit more creative with it so what I do is I push myself in the gym to reach new um, performances that I haven't ever did done before. Uh, like for example, instead of running 15 minutes, 
I'll run for 40. Um, and then the next day, instead of running 40, I'll run 60 minutes um, with the same intensity. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep raising the intensity, basically having more resistance against me. And by me not succumbing to the excuses, you know, actually pulling through on the goal, that kind of shows my brain, you know, who's the boss. It shows it that I put my goals in front of my feelings and emotions. So it's actually better to set a, a, a medium goal, something you know you're going to reach. Like let's say you currently do 20 minutes, so instead of setting it for 60, you set it for 40 because you know you're going to stretch, be able to stretch yourself till 40. It's, it's better to, it might sound weird, but it's actually better to do 40 minutes um, when you said you're going to do 40 minutes, then say you're going to do 60, give up at 50. Um, because the main idea is not how much you did. Obviously, the more the better. But the main idea is, first of all, that you actually came through. That you actually decided this is what, how much I'm going to do. And you actually did it. And then you proved your brain, again, that you put your goals above how you feel at that moment. So every time you sort of set a goal and then don't um, go through that goal because you didn't feel like it, your brain trusts you less. So it's going to give you less access to highly developed ideas, less motivation. On the contrary, again, the more you're a man of your word, you could say, the more you show your brain you can handle tough shit, the more access it's going to give you to and motivation to a bigger array and complexity of long-term goals. There's a phenomenon that you'd see a lot of people, they can't set goals that are more than a week at max to achieve because your brain, the brain just doesn't trust them to actually pull through on goals that are longer than a week because it knows they're going to lose the motivation. That's one of the biggest problems of today's generation is that everything has to be instantaneous. So you don't actually have the ability to set long-term goals and be aware that, you know, there's going to be a lot of um, problems along the way and setbacks and actually, you know, beforehand actually know that it's going to take pretty much 10 times more than you thought it's going to take. So two tips. Um, First of all, meditate. Um, meditation is the single best way to increase your willpower. Why is that? Most of the resistance and the, the, the hard part, you could say, 80% of the hard part about stretching yourself is what goes on in your head. Uh, even something physical, like in the gym, it, it's mainly your brain that doesn't believe you know it doesn't believe that you can exert this much energy so it's not going to let you so it's going to start making you feel tired again think thinking you're feeling tired uh there's all the shit that goes on in your head it's going to take your you know you're going to lose focus it's going to give you a lot of excuses so what happens when you meditate a lot, and I'm talking about 20, 30 minutes a day of uh, breathing meditation, just you know, becoming present to the moment, is that you're basically going to start um, becoming present. And then when you're, let's say you're, you're running and you wanna stop, because your brain tells you, it's like, dude, you're tired, stop, you have to stop. What you can do, you can become present, quiet the mind, and actually feel how your body feels in real time not just what the head is saying but how does it actually feel and you'll notice that it, it doesn't actually feel bad it's the pain is imaginary and the, the body actually feels okay once you make that distinction uh, you'll realize that right off the bat you can perform about five ten times higher intensity than you thought you could beforehand so it's going to give you a major, major, major boost to your willpower immediately because you're going to see that you're not even facing a real challenge. 
Uh, so meditation is key. Um, second tip is that, again, based on the assumption that most of the resistance and, and the hardship is in the head, um, the reason, the, the eight, eight, so like I said, 80% of the hard part is in the head. You can solve most of it by meditating and being present to the moment, but you can actually solve another major chunk of it just by making a full decision to go through with what you're going to do. So again, the difference between I'll try, which basically puts how you feel at a higher level than actually achieving the goal versus I'll, I'll make it happen no matter what. I'm going to do it. You know, it's called a coma death decision. It's called a coma death decision because basically you're saying I'll have to be either in a coma or dead in you know in case it's not going to happen that's the if it didn't happen it's because I'm in a comma or I died so um, most of the mental resistance and problem it's actually because of the fact that you haven't decided that you're gonna pull through no matter what you still have some conditions so you're like yeah I'm, pr I'm probably gonna go through with it but you know but unless something unless I feel like this or unless I think this so making the decision right off the bat I'm gonna make I'm gonna do it no matter what basically you can it makes you channel your energy into actually doing it whereas when you you're not that clear on actually pulling through and doing it and you just said I'll try or I will unless then you're going to spend your mental energy on whether you're going to pull through or not. You know, like, yeah, maybe, should I? Okay, should I stop? No, yes, no. So you basically, you lost most of your focus. And now you're focusing on prevention, on should I stop versus drawing up more in yourself, more from the reserve to keep going. So, again, the two tips are meditate to be present because it's mostly in your head so when you'll be when you're present you'll see that it's in your head you'll be aware of it so it won't trick you and second thing is when you're gonna do it decide to do it right off the bat no matter what no comma death make it happen because that's going to channel most of your energy into making it happen so if you have any goals in your life right now that you're not accomplishing if you have anything that you know you, you don't have the motivation again you don't have a motivation problem you have a willpower problem it's it's the motivation problem is the symptom because you're relying on motivation uh and, and the, the irony is that somebody who has the willpower he's going to get the motivation and he doesn't need it and somebody who needs the motivation is not going to get the motivation and he needs it. <laughs> um, so I hope that kind of clears a lot. Um, again, if you're stuck on anything, anything not working out for you, any, you know, no motivation, whatever it is, start small. You can start in other places. You don't, have to, you don't even have to start in the, the thing. So if it's like a business goal, that doesn't mean you have to start with business. You can start with the gym. You can even start with, you know, your diet or meditation, anything pretty much that is going to make you kind of, you know, do things that are a bit outside of your comfort zone uh, where you kind of stretch a bit. So start stretching yourself and then very quickly you're going to notice within a couple of days, maybe a week or two, uh, you're going to start seeing your motivation levels rising and rising. And again, the more you stretch yourself, um, the more, the faster you're going to get more motivation because your brain is going to realize that you're the boss and that he can trust you to go through with your plans. So make sure you only stretch yourself to the extent that you know that you're not going to give in midway because again, if you stretch yourself by 100%, um, that's amazing but if you stretch yourself by 
you tried stretching yourself by 200% and you gave up at 150%, it, it sounds like it's better because you, you, know, you quit at a further level. But again, the point is not how far you can take it. Obviously, that, that's good if you can, but the point is that you actually went through with it all the way. So I hope that helped you. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do <laughs> daily, keep uploading these videos daily. And uh, thanks for watching.